Hi everyone, my name is Milan and today we're talking about software architecture, but maybe not in a way that you would expect at first. Did you ever write architecture tests before? Let me show you what I'm talking about. We are starting off in Visual Studio, where I already opened a project that follows the clean architecture. You might remember it from one of my previous videos. We also have a test project where we are going to write our architecture tests. But before that, I will first go over the projects that we have in the solution. The first project in our solution is the domain project, which if you remember from the clean architecture definition sits at the center of our system. Then we have the application layer or project, which references the domain project. We also have external projects in the sense of the clean architecture, infrastructure and presentation. Both of these projects are allowed to reference the application and domain projects, but they are not allowed to reference each other. And at the top we have the web project, which references all of the previously mentioned projects because it needs to wire up dependency injection so we don't have a way to avoid this. Now let's move on to the actual architecture tests. I already prepared an architecture test project where we are going to write our actual architecture tests. I also prepared some constants that represent the root namespaces of all of the projects inside of the solution. So we have the domain namespace, application infrastructure, presentation and web namespace. What we need to do now is first install a NuGet package so that we can write our architecture tests. The library that we need is called netarctest.rules. I'm going to go ahead and install it. And now that it's installed, we can go ahead and write our first architecture test. The first test that I will write is going to be focused on the domain project. Since I'm using xUnit, I will start out with the fact attribute to define our test. I want to name the tests so that we first have the project that we are referencing, then we say should, and then whatever is the assertion that we are testing. In this case, I want to test that the domain project should not have a dependency on any of the other projects. So I say domain should not have dependency on other projects. All right, and we are going to follow the arrange act assert format inside of our test methods. So let's start out with the arrange step. The first thing that we need to do is introduce a variable that will hold the assembly of the domain project. And to get that assembly, I'm going to use the type of operator and pass in the assembly reference class that is defined inside of the domain project. I also have an assembly reference inside of all of the other projects, which I will use to get the respective assembly. So now we can get the assembly and we also need an array of strings containing the namespaces of the other projects that we want to test as dependencies. So I'm going to say other projects, create a new array, and pass in the namespaces. In this case, I want to check that domain is not referencing the application namespace, the infrastructure, the presentation, and the web namespace. That was our arrange step. Now we can move on to writing the actual test. We start off with the types class, that is coming from the library that we just installed for writing the architecture tests. And on it, we need the in assembly method and we pass in our domain assembly. And now we can go ahead and start writing our rule. We say types in the assembly that we just specified should not have a dependency on all of the projects that we have defined inside of our other projects domain. To test that our rule is enforced, we need to call get result to get the test result save that test result inside of a variable and in the assert step i'm going to write our assertion i want to check that the test results is successful property is true i'm using fluent assertions here so i'm saying test result is successful should be true now i want to test that our test is actually passing so i'm going to go ahead and run it and as you can see the test is green so now we can move on. I'm going to go ahead and copy over our existing test. And now I want to test the application project. So I will rename the test. I also need to rename the assembly that we are testing. And I need to change the projects that the application project should not be referencing. In this case, 
it's going to be smaller the application project should not be referencing infrastructure presentation and web all of the other things remain the same i'm going to run the tests again and i expect both of the tests to be green awesome both of the tests are passing now i'm going to quickly add the test for the infrastructure project we get the infrastructure assembly the references this time change infrastructure should not be referencing presentation and web i'll also before running it create another test for the presentation project we need to change the assembly that we are testing on the project that we should not be referencing changed slightly in this case it is infrastructure and web and now we can go ahead and run all of our tests all right that's building it's going to run the tests and hopefully all of the tests are going to be green awesome now i want to show you another type of architecture test that we can run so far the tests that we were writing are verifying that a certain project is not referencing any of the other projects this is based on the clean architecture and we want to enforce those rules but we can also write more detailed tests i'm going to move over to the test targeting the application assembly because i want to write more tests that are focused on the application project the application project is using the cqrs pattern for implementing our business rules that means that we have commands and queries commands for writing to the database and queries for reading from the database this also means that for every command and query we have a respective handler class and this is a convention that we follow i will show you that when i type in handler i get the two handlers that we have in our project which is first for the get webinar query and then the create webinar command and the test that i want to write is that our handlers should have a dependency on the domain namespace so so far we were testing that something does not have a dependency i want to go the other way around now and how we would do this is slightly different I'm going to name the test handlers should have dependency if I could type on domain. All right, I'm going to add the arrange act assert steps and we can write our test. So I want the application assembly i'm going to pull it quickly and store it inside of the variable and this is all that we need for the arrange step now i can write the actual test and we're going to start out with the types class again in the assembly that we just that we just stored in the variable and this part is a little different now we are going to say that and this allows us to write a condition to filter a certain types in this assembly and write tests for them in this case we need types that are in the application assembly that have a name ending with handler if you recall we have a convention that all of our command and query handlers should end in handler now that we have these types we can say types in the application assembly that have a name ending with handler should have a dependency on and i'm going to pass in the domain namespace I'm going to get the result of this test, store that in a variable, and I'm going to assert that the is successful property on the test result should be true. All right, let's see if our test is passing. And as you can see, the test is green. So far I've only shown you tests that are passing and this can be a little misleading. So let's see if I break the rule that I've written in this specific test, the test will turn red. That will tell us that our test is actually doing what it's supposed to. I'm going to go to the get webinar by ID query handler. I'm going to delete the reference to the domain project and remove this so that everything compiles. Okay, now our get webinar query handler should compile and it does not have a dependency on the domain namespace so i expect the test that we just wrote to fail and let's see if that's actually the case the tests are running 
and as you can see the test that we just wrote is failing so that tells us that our test is actually working it's testing what we expect it to i'm going to now fix the get webinar query handler i want to show you one more example i'm moving over to the test for the presentation project i'm going to copy it over to save us some time and i will say controllers because i want to write a test that is targeting controllers should and in this case have a dependency on and i want to check if the controllers have a dependency on mediator mediator is the library that we use to send our command and query objects to their respective handlers so we can remove the array containing the other projects we just need the assembly and i'm going to write the test from scratch or rather from this point so we say types in the presentation assembly we call that so that we can write a more specific condition have a name ending with controller and i want to say should have a dependency on and i will pass in mediator of course i need to call get result and now i can check if the test is passing And as you can see, all of the tests are green. All right, that was the introduction to architecture tests. I hope that you learned at least something new in this video. I also hope that I have inspired you to give architecture tests a try. I'm sure you can easily read the documentation of this library and add a few architecture tests to your project by the end of this day. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And until next time, stay awesome.